So the iPad Pro 2021 is an amazing machine. It's got lots of new features. It is, a, as with the previous 2020, it is a stunning piece of equipment, but I would not recommend an upgrade from the 2020 in any way. And I'll explain why now. So my big problem with um, the iPad 2021 is the RAM. I'll go straight into it. I could tell you about how good the mini LEDs look. The blacks are blacker. The um, overall, it's the, the iPad experience is, is one of my favorite um, ways to create in. I use two things, I sculpt and I paint. So I use mainly Nomad Sculpt for my sculpting and I use Procreate mostly for my painting. Now. I upgraded for one reason and I upgraded for the RAM increase. So with my 2020 um, and I only got the 256 gig, so 256 gig of storage, but I had six gig of RAM and I came up from a, tw a 2018 four gig and I saw quite a leap in my sculpting. It meant I could go from um, something like seven or eight million polygons up to about 20 million polygons of sculpting and it performed admirably so that leap from four gig to six gig was well worth it so the ipad 2021 was announced with up to 16 gig of ram so i obviously got the same excitement and then i saw on mac rumors a little bit of a worry about the fact that Apple actually restrict the RAM to five gig per app. So I looked around, I talked to the developer um, of Nomad and it did seem like that was gonna be a thing. But luckily WWDC was coming up and iOS 15 was coming. So my thoughts were absolutely they can't leave, you know, a 16 gig machine can't, cannot have a restriction that, that, that says just five gig of the RAM is gonna be used. So I'll take a gamble and then maybe return it if, if not, but uh, hopefully it, it won't come to that. Um, WWDC came along, all of these amazing new iOS 15 features, all of the, um, the new multitasking features, lots, lots of exciting things, but nothing about opening up that RAM throttling. So it, for me, it was a crushing realization that I just spent two grand on a machine that is essentially the same as the previous one. Now, I know some people will say, well, there's lots more in it. There's the mini LED, there's the, you know, it does, it is a nicer, uh, it, there are more things in there to make it visually appealing. There's an M1 in it, woo, amazing. But when you start looking at um, what you can do with it from a creator's point of view in terms of the sculpting and the painting, because the RAM is limited and most of the sculpting is done using the CPU, not the GPU, obviously GPU for things like the real-time rendering and things like that, but most of the core modeling, sculpting, voxelization, um, uh, remeshing is all done with CPU. I get zero increase at all, nothing, zip, nada, nothing. So side by side on Geekbench, you can see some amazing improvements, but when you actually sit side by side inside of Nomad Sculpt and you look at what speeds you're getting for your remeshes, and when you look at how things, um, th there is a point where the machine will, or, or, or the software will crash if you uh, uh, remesh up too high. So if you're trying to remesh your model and it goes up to you know, 20 or 30 million polygons, and even though it warns you not to do it, you do it and it crashes, then you, you know that obviously you would think that the extra RAM would solve that. Well, if it's limited to five, and well, it doesn't matter how fast the M1 is compared to the Bionic, uh, or the ARM compared to the Bionic, what happens is it still crashes because it doesn't have any more RAM to play with. For me, that's it, game over. If I can't see an improvement of, in my sculpting, then there is no point. There's nothing that, that it gives me over the 2020 that would make me keep it, which is a real, real shame because I have this real thought that in the future, the M1 is gonna be, you know, once developers really start writing for this, this machine and once they open up the RAM, then it could be um, an amazing machine, but, if they're going so heavily with multitasking and 
they're, they're, uh, they're going for different markets where, you know, multiple software is going to be running all the time. Well, they, they may never open up that, that limit. They, they may leave us with the five gig limit, which means I could have spent two grand completely um, for no reason. So for me, unfortunately, it's going back to the shop. I've still got a few days. Um, I, I am impressed with it. I've done some recordings. I've done some course uh, chapters with it. Um, but there is no fundamental benefit, and I don't want to sit on a two grand uh, payment for um, uh, two years when I'm not getting any benefit from it. There's plenty more hardware out there I could spend that two thousand on that that would um, improve my work or improve what what I'm doing. So it's a real sad, sad day for me in terms of of, of how excited I was for the new iPad and how crushed I am now that it's going back. So to prove that, let's just take 2020 iPad with the red sphere, default sphere, 2021 with blue, just to make the distinction for you easier. And what we're going to do is we're going to voxel remesh up to the same number and see what happens. So in the red one, I'm going to type in, let's do it. I'm going to put 400 in and we'll click OK. And then we'll remesh. It says the multi-resolution will be lost. So let's tap it and see how long that takes. And then just to do the same, we'll remesh on the 2021 iPad to 400 and we'll click okay. And we'll remesh, remesh will be lost. And there you go. So what we've got in terms of speed of the remeshing, you've got two, 2057 um, uh, milliseconds. So that's basically two seconds to remesh it on the 2020 iPad. And it's, let's zoom right in, it's 1.35 on the uh, 2021. So great, it definitely is doing remeshes faster, so that's fine. So let's just go a little bit higher, and we're going to try not to crash the machine here. So instead of doing 400, which reverted to 399, I'm going to go to 600. And two things will happen here, it'll either do it at the same speed, or it will crash. So we've gone remesh, see what's happened. And it's remeshed it to, um, the, the polygon count is now one and a half million and it's six, one, six, six milliseconds. So basically six seconds. So let's do this one, 600, 600. Okay, and remesh. And it calculates, so we're going to assume it's going to do it in about four, which it says it has. So it's remeshed it in about four seconds. So that's great. So the speed is a definite improvement. I don't have an issue with that at all. There's definitely a you know a percent, and I haven't worked it out yet, but it's definitely faster for some of this kind of geometry work. But let's go a little bit higher because the issue, as I've said is that it's got a RAM limitation. And uh, if I go 1200 and we'll remesh it, it's obviously gonna give us a warning. Let it calculate. Well, it was, it was saying six seconds before, so let's see what it does at this one. And it could easily crash. Um, it's not happening yet. There you go, and it crashed. So what I've done there is I forced it to do too much and, it's, and it's, it, it, it needs RAM to do this. So not VRAM, it needs CPU's RAM. It needs it, it needs RAM um, for the core um, functions, not for you know, not for doing things like rendering and stuff like that. So let's do it on the iPad 2021, 1200, enter and remesh. Now it's going to do it quicker, but in theory, if this had more RAM to play with, this should you know it, well. There you go. What actually happened is it crashes quicker. So I pushed it further than I would want to. It, you know, I, I basically pushed it to the point where it runs out of RAM. But that limitation is coming at the same sort of, you know, it's basically at the same RAM level because it's hitting that five gig of RAM allowed for the app and then it kills it. Now, if I've got 16 gig to play with and the reason that's crashing is, is it's running out of RAM, then that means I've got 10 gig of RAM that I've paid for that sat there doing absolutely nothing. And that's just not acceptable for me for a two grand piece of kit for a year to be sat there like that. It's just not going to it's not going to fly for me. So there's lots more tests I can do. 
Um, but if WWDC didn't give me that access to that extra RAM, then for me, this is pretty much dead in the water. It's a fantastic machine, as, as all the iPads have been in the last few generations, but there is no fundamental need to upgrade from a 2020 at all. There's nothing that you get other than some speed. Um, now, if you're coming up from uh, 2018 and you only had four gig of RAM and you're now hitting six gig of RAM, you are definitely gonna see a benefit. So don't discount this machine if you're at a lower base when you, when you come to it. So overall, massively disappointing for, for me and I'm lucky I can still return it at the moment. Um, but for, for other people, uh, I would not recommend this as an, as an upgrade from a 2020. Thank you so much for looking at the video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, a thumbs up would help us get in front of other people. If you're liking this kind of thing, then subscribe down below and hit the notification bell so we can let you know when we're uploading new content. And don't forget, we've got plenty of other stuff over here, uh, either in the main channel or things that are relevant to this video. So take a look at what we've put there and see if it's useful to you.